I'm not sure when this video will be released, but it should be during the opening weekend, and I thought there is no better way to celebrate the new MLB season than reminding myself that my team is the only team without a no-hitter in their history. I seem to be pretty good at making predictions. That's the whole offseason. Well, like I said before, I probably missed something important, and if I did, please let me know in the comments. I guarantee when I post this video, something big is probably going to happen. So, mentioning that the Padres don't have a no-hitter, that should create a greater chance of a no-hitter actually happening this season. See? I'm smart like that. The title is pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure you've heard someone say that every no-hitter or perfect game has a game-saving play. Well, today, we will be looking at the best plays and ranking them. Just a few ground rules before I start. There have been a total of 303 no-hitters throughout MLB history, 23 of which were perfect games. Obviously, there will be some plays that I either miss or I feel were not worthy of being placed among the group on this tier list. If there are any plays that you feel should have been given consideration, leave them down in the comments and I think I'll make a pinned comment with each of these suggestions with my ranking and short explanation. And shout out to YouTuber KTO for inspiring this video. If you don't know who he is, he makes football videos and has done a few tier list videos on topics somewhat similar to this. So check him out if you're interested. The way this list will work is that I will show the clip of the play and try to give some context to the situation. Also, if necessary, I will talk about the aftermath of the no-hitter or perfect game. So before I continue on with the list, here's the criteria to my rankings. Obviously, the play itself plays a part. Also, the reaction of the crowd and commentary matters. Also, the impact of the play itself is crucial. Meaning, did it save a no-hitter with only a few outs remaining? Or was it towards the beginning of a game? That is my criteria, so enough explanations. Let's get into the tier list. That ball hit deep into left center field. Wise back, back. Makes the catch! What a play! Wade Wise makes the catch! What a play by Wise! Well, I thought I'd start with probably the most iconic play on this list. This play was made during the 18th perfect game in MLB history. At this point, Mark Burley was in the middle of his final All-Star season. The White Sox were fighting the Tigers and Twins for first place in the AL Central. Dwayne Wise was brought in as a defensive substitute in center field at the beginning of the ninth inning. At this point in his career, Wise was a journeyman, never sticking with an organization for more than a few years. After Wise robbed Gabe Kapler of his home run, that area of the wall was labeled the catch. After this game, the White Sox were tied for first place, but they wouldn't reach that mark for the rest of the season. Still, the catch itself was spectacular, and the commentary from Hawk Harrelson was memorable. Easy top tier for me. Steps out of the box. Center field looper coming hard as Greer. He dodged. He makes the catch. Rusty Greer in center field. There's one out. Well, look over here. Another perfect game. Although this play may not be as widely known as the previous entry. This perfect game was thrown by Kenny Rogers, who didn't have a great season in 1994. The catch was made by Rusty Greer, who was a rookie in 94, and he actually had a great season, finishing third in Rookie of the Year voting. While I don't think this catch was as impressive as the previous entry, the crowd noise is there, the great call by the commentator is there, and this perfect game made the 1994 season better for Rangers fans. As you may know, the 1994 season ended abruptly due to a strike from the players. This perfect game took place about two weeks before the season ended. The Rangers were in first place, although they did have a losing record. In fact, by the end of the season, the AL West standings were pretty ridiculous. So the Rangers may have been robbed of a playoff spot, but at least the perfect game makes up for it, and Rusty Greer saved that memory for Rangers fans. I think this is hang a star tier. He's in there in the fourth inning. Not going to be an easy play. Profar hustling over there. Profar dives and he caught it. One of the more recent no-hitters. Mike Fire's second no-hitter of his career, to be exact. In the sixth inning, Profar made a great catch to save this no-hitter. At first, I thought this catch wasn't too spectacular, but it almost seemed like the dive was a split-second decision. Although the commentary wasn't great and the crowd reaction wasn't that big. So I'm going to put this in the solid tier. 
There's no hitter. So two outs. And here's Joey Votto. Votto in the air. Center field. Loriano back. Loriano at the wall. He leaps and he caught it. He did it again. Now we have a catch that happened the very next play. Ramon Loriano robbed Joey Votto of a game tying home run. It's one thing to rob a base hit with no one on base, but it's another thing to rob a home run that would have tied the game, and of course would have broken up the no hitter. Robbing a home run takes precise timing, especially with the bigger fences to climb in the Coliseum. Also, the commentary was better and the fans seemed more lively. I'm putting this in the amazing tier. That's a fair ball, a long throw by Pablo. It's there! What a play! Now we head back to 2013, Tim Lincecum's first of two career no-hitters. While contextually, this no-hitter did nothing in terms of the Giants' overall season record, the play itself is very difficult. Sandoval has to run past the foul line to gather himself, and he does not have enough time to make a full run-up before his throw, meaning he has to generate immense power to make the perfect throw. Legendary announcer John Miller made a great call, and the crowd made lots of noise, despite it being an away game. Although to be fair, this is a game in 2013, and the Padres were doing nothing in 2013. 13. Still, compared to the rest of the list, I'm going to put this in solid tier. Right field, and he dives! He's got it! Now we have a play that occurs in inning after Sandoval's play. I'm not going to say much about this one. It was a fantastic catch, along with a great reaction from Lincecum, Pence, the crowd, John Miller, and most notably, Alexi Amarista. If there was a tier between Amazing and Hang a Star, I'd put it there. In this case, I'll put it in Amazing as I don't think it's as noteworthy as the two above. Watch it! There's a drive on the line to left field, come on Moose! He did it! He did it! Moran made a fabulous catch! It's a no-hitter! This play is very interesting to dive into. This was actually the second game of the day between the Cubs and Cardinals, and the Cubs lost the first leg of the doubleheader. The pitcher who threw the no-hitter, Don Cardwell, was actually just traded to the Cubs two days before. In fact, in his previous start, Cardwell held the Dodgers hitless for five innings, allowing only one hit in six innings. A little piece of foreshadowing. Although, I'm having a hard time putting this any higher than solid tier. The catch itself was nice, but nothing incredible. Captain slowly, been in 10 days pretty fast. Olsen has it, and did he tag him? No. Brian Gorman actually just motioned to Benintendi here and told him you were out of the baseline. Benintendi is losing his mind over here at first base right now. This play is really interesting when you follow the path of Matt Olsen. Benintendi is a fast player. He had 21 stolen bases in 2018. Olsen starts very far away from this chopped ground ball. If you watch Olsen, he runs to the ball at an angle to where he will be able to dive at Benintendi because he knows that he's too fast. Olsen could not have read the play any better in my opinion. However, due to the fact that it only caused the runner to run outside of the baseline, it didn't really raise a great reaction from the commentators nor the crowd. I'm putting this in the meh tier. Ripken on first with two outs in the ninth. The Brewers lead 7 to nothing. Hit in the air. Yount. Makes a great catch and Juan Diemus has thrown the first no-hitter in Milwaukee Brewer history. What else can happen to this team? Juan Diemus has no-hit the Baltimore Orioles on a great game-ending catch by Robin Yount. The context of this story I think matters the most. The Brewers were in the middle of a 13 game winning streak at the start of the 1987 season. We have all at least heard the name Robin Yount, a Brewers legend. Although you probably haven't heard the name Juan Nieves. And looking at his limited career stats, I don't blame you. He was crushed in his first start of the year, but this no hitter took that all away. He will forever be enshrined in Brewers history. I'm going to place this in the amazing tier. He's trying to write a beautiful script here this afternoon. The 3-2 pitch to Chris Bryant. In the air to center field. Herrera going back toward the wall. Does he have it? He reaches down. Did he make the catch? He made the catch! The 13th no-hitter in Philadelphia Phillies franchise history has a little bit of drama right at the end. 
Now this is a catch that is very hard for me to rank. Herrera made a great split second catch to confirm Hamill's no hitter. However, to be fair, he seemed to overrun the ball, and it kind of looked like he slipped and ended up with the ball in his glove. Although, this is one of the only positives of the Phillies 2015 season, as they finished the season in last place in their division. Also, this was Cole Hamill's final start as a Philly before he was traded, a team that he had been a part of for a decade. I'm not sure how controversial this decision is going to be, but I'm going to put this in hang a star tier. 3-1 coming to Molina, and a fly ball deep left field. Back goes Baxter onto the track. He makes the catch! What a play! This is another catch that I don't really know how to rate. On one hand, Baxter tracked the ball really well and paid the price by running into the wall at full speed. It was not a super athletic play, which could knock it down. Although Santana's no-hitter is the only one in Mets history, and he missed the previous season due to shoulder surgery. 2012 was also the final season of Santana's career. This no-hitter didn't really affect the trajectory of the Mets 2012 season, but this catch is still an integral part of Mets history as it led to the franchise's first no-hitter. I'm going to put this in the amazing tier, which again could be controversial. The 1-0 pitch. Right back to Verlander who knocks it down. His throw. Got him at first base. Great play. Oh, what a play by Verlander and Cabrera. I'm going to keep this one short. Yes, it's a good play. It can't be easy for a pitcher to run after a ball that just hit them and fire a can in the first base. But I have to start to be more critical because I can't put everything in the first two tiers, despite every play here being at least somewhat impressive. It's easier for me to put this play lower because Justin Verlander is on the Astros. Not objective reasoning, but it's what I'm going with. This is going in the Met tier. Please don't hate me, Astros and Tigers fans. Ground ball toward the hole. Matt Thice with a diving stop. Gets up. Fires to first. Got him. What a play by Thice. This was the Angels' first home game after Tyler Skaggs' death. And Taylor Cole and Felix Pena threw a combined no-hitter. The play on its own is not overly impressive in my opinion. I expect an average third baseman to make this play. However, the story that surrounds this game is what matters most. This is Hang a Star tier. And this is hit out into the alleyway. A long run for Blanco, and Blanco's gonna dive, and he makes the catch! To me, this is the definition of hang a star tier. Any catch that is made towards the outfield wall gets extra points from me, and this saved a perfect game. Commentary, crowd reaction, everything is here. Easy top tier. One pitch, ground ball over the middle, charged by Vizquel, bare hands and a no hitter. Another tough decision. I'm beginning to think that I should have brought in some routine ground balls to this list so it doesn't seem so top heavy. Vizquel was a fantastic defender, one of the best of all time. The fact he barehanded this is what's really impressive. However, it's almost like he made it look so easy that it brings down the ranking for me. It's not a super athletic play, it's just impressive. This wasn't the first no-hitter in Mariners history, but it was the final out of the game. Because of how routine it looked, I'm putting this in the solid tier, although I probably could be persuaded otherwise. Two outs. Now on 2-2. Ground ball, Seager down to his chest, whips it on a bounce in time. Wow. What a play. If I'm comparing this to the Sandoval play from earlier, I'd say this one is better. Seager didn't have the arm strength, but he also had to throw it from a more difficult angle without the ability to generate the power needed. I'm putting this in the amazing tier. Tejada, back at the middle, diving as Pedroia gets up and throws him out! Now this, this is a top tier play. Pedroia was a fantastic second baseman during his prime. In fact, he won Rookie of the Year during the season. Speaking of rookies, this was Buckles' second career start. Don Orsillo is a great commentator, and Fenway Park always has a loud crowd, especially during a World Series winning season. 
I'm putting this in hang a star tier. Kristen Yelich is 0 for 3 today. And a ball driven to left center. Souza. He's got it! He's got it! It's a no hitter for Jordan Zimmerman! Okay, this was the final game of the 2014 season for the Nationals. The Nationals had clinched first place in the division a while before this game, so all eyes had been on the postseason. However, there is no better way to hype up a team and their fans by making history. Zimmerman made history as he threw the first no-hitter since the team moved to Washington, and Souza made a fantastic catch. I mean, I might be too nice with these rankings, but I see no reason to put this other than hang a star tier. And a swing and a high fly ball toward left center field. Jackson is on the run, still going. He makes the catch! Oh, Jackson! Austin Jackson in left center field! A sparkling play! I have two more plays to show. This one led to an unofficial perfect game. Galarraga did basically pitch a perfect game, but a bad call took that away from him. As a result, this catch by Jackson didn't really matter. In that context, I just can't put it in hang a star tier, even though I want to. So it will be in the amazing tier. On a night that's starting to feel special in Pittsburgh. Bell shoots one to second. Chase Audrey! Oh my goodness! This actually might be one of the most athletic catches I have ever seen. Rich Hill threw 9 no-hit innings, but he lost it in the 10th inning on a walk-off home run due to a lack of run support from his team. This is a similar situation to Galarraga, so I just can't put it in the top tier even though I want to. This is going in the amazing tier. I have to say, while I did enjoy making this list, it was way harder than it should have been. This may look top heavy right now, but I actually moved quite a few plays down. Here is a list of the plays that I moved down throughout the making of this list. I know that you will disagree with me on some of these plays. These are all great plays on their own, but when you rank them against each other, it is very hard to find an accurate place for them. None of these plays were placed in the bottom tier, which makes sense since there was no bad play here. So I'm curious what your rankings would be. The tier list will be in the description if you want to take a crack at it. And if you have any suggestions for more tier list videos, leave them down in the comments. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe if you want to stick around. Thanks for watching.